an open book. Okay. I um Okay. We're good. I just want to certain what I'm gonna say. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Ozzy, my guest today is Hispaldo Jimenez. Exactly. Um Ozzy is a visual artist, photographer, and musician living and working in Chicago. Yeah. Um Ozzy. Is it fair to say that most of your work these days is songwriting? Mm-hmm. The the majority of it? Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of like lyric based and stuff, like like the whole like music etiquette and like um strumming and chords and drum and all, all that stuff. I leave that up to like, like mm-hmm. my boys, like the pros. Of course they ask me for like feedback and stuff because I have like my basic like music knowledge and then mm-hmm. like they uh, they they basically create the whole structure in the bones and then they give it to me. Mm-hmm. And then um <laughs> towards you. And then um, they're like, all right, Ozzy, this is what like what we have. Yeah. All right, cool. And then I'll listen to it a few times and go over it. And I basically just freestyle and then I try to make up words and stuff. But I, I ask them, like, is there a theme or something? Mm-hmm. Like, whatever is whatever's personal to you, whatever you want to write about. I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. And then cool. I bring it to practice and I'm like, okay, cool. That's mm-hmm. what I got. See? And then we change it up. We keep it. Mm-hmm. So your process. Um, I know... Uh, Ernest Hemingway, he mm-hmm. says that his his um, sort of mantra is that there is nothing, there's no trick to writing. And you sit down and you bleed. Is that how you feel about oh, yeah. your process? I ex- I do bleed. Like I, I sometimes dry, drive myself crazy because I want to make it work. I want to make it fit. But it's just, at the same time, you can't always do that. Sometimes I have to like step back, mm-hmm. just listen to like the whole instrumentals and the music on like on, like on its own. Then I think of patterns and like I think of a lot of poetry at the same time with with, with like writing. Right. Like we recently wrote a song called Por Sangre y um, Tierra, and for that song, I wrote out like the whole lyrics. It's like a whole song in Spanish. Then I read it as if I was in like a poetry slam. And if it sounds beautiful or like nice, I'm I'm pretty sure I can make it sound badass when I'm screaming. So, Shit, yeah. So what is your writing process like? Do you do you kind of write at all times of the day, at like throughout your day, throughout your life? Is it more of an intentional thing or do you... It's very unintentional. Unintentional? So, like some, so on like my phone, on like my notes app, I have I have like different like notes for like different ideas or thoughts that come into my head and like either words or phrases or like beats or something, like tempos. If something hits me, I take out like my phone and I type it in. Okay. So then when it comes to like actually sitting down and writing, I go through all my notes and I pick and pick and choose like things that, that I think will, will like work together. Hmm. Then if that if that if that isn't working, I tend to of course just listen to music, but I try to listen to music outside of like the genre of, of like what I'm playing just to like see if I could find something and gravitate towards it and oh, make that's it like my own. Yeah. What um what music do you listen to outside your genre? Do you frequent anything? Um, I listen to a lot of stuff, so like, like Spanish, like um, corridos, um, reggaeton. So I'm, I'm like the Spanish spectrum, and then like mm-hmm. with like English a lot, so like hardcore, like punk, lots of like emo, like mid, like Midwest, like post punk stuff. Sure. Um, I have like whole bunch of playlists on like my Spotify, and then like whatever I'm feeling for in like the day, I just shuffle all, everything. Just I get I get a good mix of everything in like my daily. You're always like digging. Listening. Yeah. Yeah, you strike me as someone who digs. Yeah, yeah. like sometimes I just want more, mm-hmm. more and more. I just want to expand like that whole knowledge and then like gives me something to share with, uh, with my friends and vice versa. Like they always send me stuff that, that um, they're listening to and I'm like, all right, how about check this out? Which trade off music, which is awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Um, Ozzy, where'd you grow up? I grew up here in Chicago on, on like the south side of um, Chicago. So originally I was born in Humble Park. So, like, from, like, the ages from, like, two to three, my family and I, we moved down to the south side. We stayed around, like, Midway area, but then we gravitated more towards, like, Gage Park area. Okay. So, and that's why I've been living, honestly, like, my whole life since I was, like, um, seven till now. Cool. On the south and the west side of Chicago? Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. How old are you now? I'm 25 now. 25. So, so like. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank yeah, your you. birthday was yesterday. Yeah. Super cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, nice. And were you were you always into art or like artistic things? Yes. Always compelled by something yes. in that way. I like one of like my first earliest memories of like art or like two. One like um, 
my dad, I remember he once bought me like uh, I know like Cray, like Crayola used to create like like big like paper like sheets and uh-huh. stuff and like a bunch of like like sheets to like draw on or paint on and stuff. He would just buy me that and a bunch of crayons and I'll just create and he will get drunk with, with like his friends in, in like the in like the um garage and like, Ozzy, come here. Show him what you made. Damn. Um, so your dad's like showing you off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh I'm like, this is what I made. Like nice. a little five year old. And his his buddies are probably all like, oh, oh yeah, great. awesome. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Picasso, Picasso. <laughs> nice. And like with my mom, my mom always gravitated towards um 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 museums and playing art, like playing like uh, like uh, music actually, and like the house. Oh cool. Like trying to interwine them both. So like I was always surrounded with like music playing in like the house and just creating in some way and like another like with her. And that was always like a nice process, right? So she was she was like intentionally exposing you to music yeah. and art, and mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, cool. What did your parents? What did they do um, in their careers or their lives or their work? Well, well, like my mom, she um, she started working off at like a radio station. Oh, so really? Like, so like doing stuff like this, and then like, oh, cool. And a lot of like the back end stuff and like filing, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. So as so as like a kid, she would, she would do a lot of traveling yeah, and for, for for like work and. Um, they always host like events here in like the city, so she always take me whenever she could. You know, like oh, like Ronald McDonald's gonna be there. I'm like, oh, alright, cool, I wanna go. That's cool for a kid. Yeah, yeah, so, that's, that's so nice. And I always travel like with her. So then, and so she started off with like that. Now she she's a she's a paralegal in, in like a, in like a law firm. Cool. And like my dad, he's just always worked on a, a construction and then like factory job. So then that's still what he's doing, just grinding it out. Cool. So very blue collar, very middle mm-hmm. class. Yeah. Upbringing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Were they artistic? I mean, you said your mother is um, my mom, music and art and my media. Mom's, my mom's always loved like like the culture, but she just she just didn't have it in 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 her like to like actually like, express it or to try. Yeah, I think she actually recently tried about like two months ago. She did like a wine tasting and like painting session. Oh, cool. Uh, up, up in Logan, mm-hmm. and she was sending me photos and I'm like, oh, I'm like that's great, mom. Like, I'm so happy for you. Sweet. Like, like keep at it. Like keep doing it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, your dad? My dad, no, he just he he just appreciates it, but he doesn't really understand it in the sense that like a lot of us do. Mm-hmm. But but he's a craftsman. Yes. So and and he like he like res- he like respects it. So like since like since a kid and growing up, you know, he will always ask me like, "What well, like what you making? Like like anything new?" And then I always talk to him. I show him pictures of stuff that I've been working on. Nice. So he's been. They've both always been supportive. Very, very um supportive. And then for like the music that I would listen to a lot as like a kid, it was very opposite to what they were listening to. It was very much more aggressive, for, yeah. like faster and harder. But like they always like gave me like a side eye. But like, but like they still accepted him. You know, like that's what he likes. Like that's what he's into. Yeah, they're happy he's doing anything. Yeah. What were they? Um, were they supportive in uh, your decision to study art? In your undergrad? Oh yeah. yeah, they're like whatever makes you happy. Honestly, like um, they believe in me. Like like we know that you'll like use that to your advantage in like the future. Nice. Um, yeah. are your parents um first generation immigrants? Yes, they are. Where are they from? Um, no, uh, they're actually not. They're not. Um, okay. No. Um, both 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 of them are from uh, Mexico. My mom is from uh, Cuernavaca, and my dad is from um Guerrero. Cool. When did they move here? Man, my mom was like probably like five or six years old. Okay, so she was first generation. Well, okay, is that what it means? I yeah, 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 yeah. It's all good. <laughs> and, like, my dad, he moved here when he was probably, like, 15, 16. Okay, so he was already, he's already um, fully grown, mostly. Yeah. Just about yeah. grown. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. And do you, do you I imagine you've, uh, like, um, adopted a lot of those traditions and customs in oh, your life? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A- absolutely. I mean, uh, growing up in, like, a very um, a Latino household, um, well, like my parents, um, they actually separated when I was like in like first first grade. Okay. So uh, it was basically as if I was living like two separate lives, like two different um, Latino household vibes. My mom very modern, like new and very expressive, like breaking a lot of like um, bad um, traits that sure. um, that uh, come living in like, in like a ho- in like a household like that. And um, my dad, very old, old school, very, very As most hard. fathers are. Yeah, so, and there was me in the middle, just back and forth, back and forth. So I feel like I always had to act and say certain things in one household and post to the other one. And then whenever I'd be alone and out and about, I'm like, well, I don't know how to figure it out. And then I'd just find myself and yeah. see what, what felt comfortable. Cool. So, and then that was 
most of your life, your childhood and through high school and yeah. stuff? Cool. Yeah. Were you playing music in high school? Yes, but it was more so on like by myself, like basic um, uh, a, a guitar. I played flute. So then I learned how to like read music. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then ma mainly self-taught, just jamming out in like my room and like, I really appreciate music and how I want to play the songs that I that I like listen to and yeah. try it out. That's awesome. And so you d hadn't played in a band before. Oh, first off, what is the name of your the band you play in? <laughs> Tell everyone, please. My band is called C Sirios Quiere. Um, and it's in Spanish. Well, like the name is in Spanish. Mm -hmm. It means God, like God willing, or if God permits it. Cool. And that's basically a, um, a saying that a lot of um, Latino moms like tell us as like a kid. It means trying trying to get us out of trouble or like um, repenting or, for your sins yes. to your children. Oh my. Yeah, like hey mom, like is it cool if I can go out? Si Dios quiere, like mm. if 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 God allows it, God willing. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's funny. So then uh, we all love we all love our like moms and stuff. And of course, just a little like trait to them. That's super funny. Um, I feel like that's a lot of. Uh, uh, like first generation immigrant parents, they're just like v sarcastic in that way. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, funny. Very, very sarcastic. Yeah. Um, so, what are some of your earliest influences in music? Like, you're so you're 16, you're playing guitar. What's on the radio? I didn't really listen to the radio because I was very anti lots of things. Like, no, I I don't want to listen to the radio. The radio is not good music. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I was I just wanted to be on my own. But like, um. Looking back, I was just very negative on like a, bu a bunch of stuff. I just wanted to rebel and I just refuse. Okay. So, but I will listen to lots of like uh, Midwest, like post hardcore emo bands, like um, like Title Fight, Citizen, Basement, um, Tiger's Jaw. So, like a lot of that type of music genre. Okay. And then, like, leading, like, once you listen to, to, like, to like that group of music, you then is that started. modern? Those are modern pants. Like mm -hmm. they were making music when you're listening to them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like uh, they were like in, like they're like at, at like their peaks when I was like at that age. Mm -hmm. And then to, to to be able to go to shows and like see them, it was just a whole different experience. You know, I, like I was just starting off going going to shows. And also, like I think also because I was a guy, because um, my mom, I was like, hey, I'm going to the show. And she'll be like, all right, well, like, if you get arrested, like, I'm not going to pick you up. I'm like, I'm not, like, I'll sure. be back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I was just out and about just ex experiencing all, all, like, these musics, and, all music bands and, like, and, like, that genre. And then it opened up, like, my mind to a lot, lots of, like, different, like, things going on in, like, the city and lots of subcultures. Yeah, where were you going to shows in high school? I was mainly at Sub T a lot. Um, mainly at Sub T and lots of uh, DIY spaces. So yeah. like um, here in Pilsen, like Pilsen uh, DIY. Uh, um, yeah. Um, there's another one up in like in Jefferson Park called like Albion House. Um, and then e even like the big venues like Metro. Um, I wasn't allowed an empty bottle yet because it was like 21 and up. Right. Um, yeah, the world I, of shows got so much better once I was 21. Yeah. 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 And you know, like. So was, like some of those bands used to play at, at like Concord Music Hall as well. Okay. So yeah, so I got to experience a lot of like those venues early on. Mm -hmm. so it was pretty cool. And do you find that some of those early influences in music also influenced some of your your art, your artistic work, like your oh. photography and your? Uh, oh yeah, a absolutely. Um, like I feel like a lot of that music had a lot of like sadness and like voyeur voyeurism in, in it so mm -hmm. then like that's how i tend to gravitate when like photographing or like making art like uh edward hopper is always going to be one of my favorite artists and then like the way that he goes about painting it's just from like an outside perspective like looking in that I, voyeuristic I, no windows yes and yeah. i feel like that's always been me listening to music or even like making art like it's just me outside and like in like a window just peeking in and just expressing what i see and what i what i and what i hear mm -hmm. i was trying to explain that to my um uh, one of my faculty members today when they're asking about like making artwork mm -hmm. i said well one of the best things about being an artist is uh is not necessarily making work it's just being observant to the world yeah you have this like special special lens you've adopted mm -hmm. to just take things in yeah and it's i love it and in me i just love capturing a moment of time and to be able to look back at that at any given time that i want is so beautiful and to be able, able to share it but like from like my point of view so lots of photographs of people of the backs of people's heads but beautiful photographs and i think those tend to be like my favorite really so like yeah. your street photography is often from um 
like capturing moments. Yeah. Okay, very candid moments. Yeah, I don't really like telling people, hey, get together, pose. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like in the, the street moment. Photo. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the, um, the little bit now that I've been doing studio studio photo the studio photo this way, mm-hmm. it's a whole different thing, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it it requires a whole different mindset. It's been tough to adjust. Oh yeah, you I know. Can imagine. Yeah, but um, but lots, it's cool. Lots of rules. Lots of rules. I mean, I made up the one rule. That's kind of my only rule. Yeah, is, I like that one. Yeah, though. play a record, and then when that side's done, the shoot's over. Mm-hmm. Just a way to keep things moving and keep it casual. That's cool. Um, so other than Hopper, who are some of your like biggest visual artist influences? Um, Vivian Meyer again. So Street I see photo. I see her as like a photographic Edward Hopper type. Like I I, I can see him go both go hand hand in hand, but she's more like the photographic side. Um, let's see who else. Man, I've been so out of touch with like with like the the artists that like um, visual artists that like I look up to. I often forget their names a lot. Yeah, uh, the names are tough. I, yeah, yeah. The artwork I could absolutely talk about for hours, but the name sometimes just catches catches me off guard. Yeah, I'm sure if we rolled that um, SXU slideshow. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. It all come back to you. I'm pretty sure if I go on like my camera roll, like um, I, oh yeah, I like this and this and that. Right. That's awesome. But you're still shooting photo? Oh, I yeah. Hope, too. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. always carrying, like, a camera on me and shooting. But, like, uh, I mentioned earlier, like, I have so many film canisters in, like, my fridge. I just got to get them done. And, like, me, I was always, like, a DIY type of guy. So I tend to do it on, like, my own and I'm mm-hmm. developing, like, my bathroom. Were you making prints yourself, too? Um, I tried and I failed. I just got to try again. Yeah, <laughs> but you were hard. developing your own. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had, like, my own scanner. And then I turned, like, my bathroom into a dark room. Nice. So, like, I'll tell everyone like that in, like, the house, don't go in the bathroom for the next, like, three hours. I'm going to be busy in there. <laughs> your family's pissed. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It's taking over. That's how, that's, that's the problem with art, though. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's very cumbersome. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ozzy, what do you know about love? Nothing. Nothing. What have you observed in your 25 years um, as an artist and as a young man? What, do you, what have you learned about love? Oh, man. I mean, I've learned to really appreciate um, friendships and, like, relationships and, like, a different perspective now. Like, to hold, hold those people that you love close to you because mm-hmm. you don't know when it will be the last time you'll ever, ever see them or talk to them again. So, like, f- like friendships. As I got older, I tended to appreciate them more than I did when I was younger. You know, mm-hmm. not just mutual acquaintances, but like actual friendships and building these bonds with like people that I care about. You know, I care about their daily lives and what they're going through and their mental states, and I tend to check up on them, and they tend to check up on me. So like those people, I I hold close to like my heart. As in relationship stuff, man, I don't know. I'm still working on that, trying to figure it out. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course. That's uh. That's sort of an unanswerable question, I feel. And then as for, like, my parents, um, I feel like I took them a lot for granted when I was younger. I didn't really appreciate them the way that I should, and I probably Mm -hmm. put them out there like hell. And I told this to, like, my mom. I was like, hey, like, I'm really sorry for the way I acted or stuff I've said when I was, like, a kid or, like, a teen. Like, just so you know, like, I love you, and I'm here for you if you ever need anything. Oh, I'm sure she, I'm sure that melted her heart. Yeah. Of course. Um, What... What is what are some misconceptions perhaps about hardcore the hardcore music scene? It's not screamo. It's not screamo. No. It's different. Okay. Yeah. It's a it's a way of self expression. You know, it's like this whole subculture where like people can like come together and like just literally gravitate towards one another and like rise up against their like any of like their struggles or like their problems you know you're in like a room full of people who are like very much probably going through anything similar to that that like you are mm-hmm. like just knowing that everyone in the in that room is for is there for like at least one reason to listen to like the music and why do do we why do we listen to it because we're all going through something you know mm-hmm. something very powerful what was your what did you do for sanity before you started singing before I started singing, because you you've always been the few years I've known you, you I've always observed you to be uh, reserved, um, very intentional, um, somewhat like somewhat um, bashful, even in a good yeah. way, in mm-hmm. an endearing way. But um, and the what I've seen you you fucking lose it. 
You're, <laughs> yeah. you're having so much fun. Yeah. What was your um, release before you found singing? Even just going to shows. I released just dancing. My, I was dancing there, yeah. just going to shows almost every other night. Uh, anytime band that uh, comes in town that I know, I'm like, I'm there. Mm-hmm. Um, again, building like those bonds with like people that, that like I love. So hanging out with them a lot. Um, just sometimes I'll just go out and like shoot on like my own. I'll, I'll have like a point and shoot and just go out for like a walk and, and uh, photograph. I didn't really have lots of money back then, but like uh, I'll always want to travel and stuff, and that's something that I'm doing now. So anytime I want to go travel somewhere, you know, I'll, I'll I'll plan it out and book it, and I go out. Cool, mm-hmm. awesome. So it sounds like you have found uh, a pretty good path at living intentionally, maybe more so than when you were a young man yeah. or a younger man. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. Cool. And so, what do you think? What's the most exciting thing happening? in your um your music career now in the next well we're, it's summer here in chicago so mm-hmm. like three months six months is this something you guys are gonna take on a national act perhaps oh yeah absolutely i mean um i just got my passport that's something i've never thought i'll ever do but um i just got my passport and that's um maybe in like in hopes like we've talked to people who um who, who book shows in um, Canada and, and like they've checked us out like hey like we'll love for you to like come out yeah. there i'm like yeah sure um, there's this really badass hardcore festival in um, Colombia, and we'll really love to get on that one day. So yeah, hell yeah. So I'll, I got that ready, but um, we're just like rocking it out, just grooving out. We're just taking it a day at a time. The one thing I really appreciate about my band, so like a lot of the bands in like this genre, like like the ones who are like actually doing it big and traveling a lot, they have lots of connections and like a networking. Like they like they know a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, we know people too, but not to like that extent to like get us onto like those big builds and stuff like that. So like every build or like every like act that like that like we put together, like we worked our like asses off for that. You know, like we actually did it. Like, You're grinding for it. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So I really like that about my band a lot. Cool. Everyone's got a workout. They get they're treating it like a career. Yeah, like uh, we're all in it together. We all love each other. You know, like, you know, we're all investing like our time into it. So like, um, let's just, like let's just do it. No. That's awesome. Not a lot of um, bands get that. I've been in bands, and they like, sometimes are fickle. Yeah, you know, with their time or with their resources. No, like oh, we like we like plan out a schedule. Like guys, we this time practice here. Um, whenever we whenever we have to travel out for a show, all right, meet up at this time here. You mm-hmm. know, stuff, and we we all like pitching. Like we all do our part. And just, I really love that. Dope. It's awesome that you guys are committed that way. Are yeah. there the rest of your band um, artists um, outside of mu- music as well? Um, one of them is, um, one of my best friends and it's all, it's cool. Like one of my best friends, I play, I play in a band with him. His nice. name is Louis. Mm-hmm. So, so he was like a visual artist. So, um, so right now he's a tattoo artist, but, um, oh, okay. right before he was a tattoo artist, he was like a visual artist. So he'll like draw up a lot of his, um, um, designs and he'll print them out on prints, put them on t-shirts. So he'll like, he'll like vend like a lot of events here. Cool. So then I like go out and 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 support him a lot. He'll make T-shirts, stickers, and you know, and, like that was like his side hustle. And he always drew in like this American traditional sense of of uh, tattooing. And then I remember a few years ago, like like my boys and I, we like tend to get together like this, and we have a car night, like just a gambling night. Mm-hmm. And um, one of them got up. He's like, Louis, when are you going to start tattooing? He's like, oh, I don't know. Like, we tried to give him a little push, and now he's actually doing it. He's nice. a fool. So like, so like, he's the one who's like, who's like tattooing and stuff outside of being like the band. So like, so like, so like that's his thing. So it's that's awesome. Cool. And he's the one who. This is your new tattoo here. Yeah, it's fresh. It's everything on like my arm. Oh, he's, cool. He, he's done everything. Nice. What's his name? Louis. Louis Hernandez. Louis Hernandez. <laughs> Louis <laughs> Louis Flores. But he but he goes by uh, Mind and Change Tattoos. Dope. And where's, what shop does he work at? He works at uh, Art, Art Spirit Tattoo. It's up in Oak Park. Dope. We'll have telefans check him out. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty pretty awesome stuff. How long has he been doing tattooing then? Well, he just pre- finished apprenticeship, so. Yeah, l- and barely. He, he's reaching like that one-year mark. Nice. He's about to reach that one-year mark now. Uh, such an intimidating craft. Yeah. I, I have no desire to even. You know, like that's one of my best friends, and I've been supporting him since day one. I was his third person he's ever tattooed. Nice. Which one's that? Um, He did this eagle piece on that's me. That's a third tattoo. That's his third tattoo he, on a human being? Yes. That's fucking amazing. And like... 
I remember he like drew it up. He's like, Ozzy, like, are you for real down to get a tattoo by me? I'm like, yeah, of course. He's like, how about this? And he and he showed me like the drawing, like the email. yeah. I'm like, I'm like, that's badass. I'm like, yeah, I, I, like, I'll get it. I'm like, maybe somewhere like my leg is like, no, 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 like this is this is supposed to be a forearm piece. I'm like, that's ambitious of him. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what? Cool of him to. I'm like, you my you boy. Too. I love you, and yeah. I believe in you. Let's do it. And then he did it, and then I've been supporting him since since then. That's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. it was just my birthday, and then um, I went to out to get this with him. Nice. Hell yeah, dude. Cool. Well, you guys have um, auxiliary things as far as your um, your music career as well. That's fucking dope. Yeah, so props to him, man. You were telling me about some show this weekend? Um, a, a visual art show? No. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so I so I have a group of friends in, uh, in like, an art um, um, collective called Riosa. And, mm-hmm. and like, they're having, um, like, like an art collective this Saturday at uh, um, the gallery in Halstead that we were seeing. Oh, uh, yeah, you told me. Hayes. Hayes Studio. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be there. It's going to be, like, some bands playing there, and like, a whole art studio. It's going to be, like, vendors. So if you got nothing to do. Yeah, I'll check that out. Yeah. Okay. Are you familiar with um, the philosopher Frederick Frederick Nietzsche? I am not. Okay. So he's got this saying, this quote. He's, he says, "Without without music, life would be a mistake." What do you make of that? I'll go insane. You go insane. Yeah. Like, I feel like even if I'm not listening to music, I'm still listening to music. Like a little like tune or something's playing like my head. Yeah. I'm often tapping like my fingers or something like. It's always going to be around me somewhere, like another, like even at even at, at like work, like um, we take over like like the aux cord and we're always playing something. I try to put my coworkers onto something and vice versa. But nice, I uh, go insane. So music is it's inherent in you, intrinsic in all of us, probably. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I feel like we all need music in some way, shape, or form. Even if you don't know anything, like if you don't know artists or songs, but if you listen to it, I feel like it'll like open up something within you Mm -hmm. i feel that music might be the first like the highest if you're gonna draw like a um a hierarchy of art Mm -hmm. i feel like music is has the shortest gap Mm. between burn the brain and human understanding what do you think because i mean visual art is you know it's impressive and it's Mm -hmm. and but it requires some forethought i feel like music is just so intuitive like it's just immediately available, even if you know nothing, you can tap right. your hands. Right, it's always know? going to be there. Like even if you listen to like the wind chime, you know, like you can make something out of it. Yeah, you can hear the birds chirping. Like, like that's something right there. Like it's always going to be there, even if you don't know it. You just and then once you learn to love and appreciate it, it'll open up like your mind to like lots of different things, and it'll make it'll make you go out and mm-hmm. do something. Even like on like our um, like on social media, like that's it's everywhere. What do you mean? Like on like on social media, like on like Instagram reels or on TikToks, like there's always going to be some type of oh, music playing. Yeah, yeah. there's always going to be something. Yeah, I think the world forgets that every single industry reco- like relies upon artists and musicians and designers. Like, yeah, there's not an industry that is everything would just untouched. be so boring and blank. You know. Very repetitive. I know. know. Like you need these things in order to like to like gravitate a crowd or to have a look or like have a style. Share a feeling. I mean, think about the pandemic. Imagine how terrible life would have been if we weren't we didn't have music and movies to right. turn to to make sense of it all. And that's one thing I appreciate about that time frame. It gave me a lot of time to be alone and to actually just create. Oh, you know what? Okay, so I just had an epiphany. We were in school together at the end of that uh Oh yeah, we were. At we the were. end of the pandemic. What was that like for you? Because we were in class, we you and I had class together, and then I think about yes, it. Yes, yes. Wow. Okay, that in the spring of 2020, I think did we have modern and contemporary together? Or no, that was something else. We had senior seminar together. Yes, we had senior seminar. What was that like for you? Because I, you know, I that was intense. I um, you know, I would see you once a week, like on the, our Zoom calls or whatever, mm-hmm. but. Uh, we didn't hang out or anything. What what were you doing? I know you were doing photo at the time. Yeah, so like my project um, revolved around around my grandma. Mm-hmm. So originally, um, my idea was to get to know like my grandma. Like she like she's here, she's alive, and she's well. But I've never had that relationship. You know? Yeah, and that goes back to like appreciating people more and building these bonds with like people. And I've always wanted that with her because I'll hear stories about like my friends and like their grandparents, and they have such a good bond. 
and uh, that's something that I've always wanted. Mm-hmm. So for my senior seminar, I wanted to tackle that um, idea, but I wanted to document it through film um, right. photography. And since we met up once a week, so once a week I'll go out and visit like my grandma, like on the day I didn't have class or something, and I'll take her out for breakfast and get to know her and sit down with her, talk with her like this. Mm-hmm. And I'll be photographing like like the whole session. I'll use like a roll of film every time I go visit her. So so it took me it took me a lot to like really dig deep into her because she was so cold hearted and like sheltered. So like she she had never had that with anyone. How old was she when you were doing that? She was like um her early seventies. Early seventies and she was born in Mexico as well? Yes. Where in Mexico? Uh, a Cuernavaca. Okay. Mm-hmm. When did she move to America? That I do not know, but I'm assuming very, very young. With like um single digits? Yeah, single digits. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Tough. Yeah. So she was she was hardened a little by life. Yeah. And then um she and she lives alone, you know, like in like this little apartment, you know, like like people do go visit her, but not to to the extent to like getting to know her. Like, like it was something brand new to her. So like interesting. And and she invited me in. She's like, yeah. Like I explained to her like my idea. I'm like I'm like I love you, but I don't know anything about you. That's really cool of you. That's super cool of you to do that. So then, uh, so that so that was my whole senior seminar project. So then, so that once a week I'll like present. All right, guys. Did this week I went to go visit my grandma and we did this and that and we talked about these ideas and these are the photographs I captured for the, for those moments. Yeah, I remember seeing your show. It was a really good show. Thank you. I loved it. But what a, what a cool project to intentionally in, like set uh, an idea for an exhibition out and then also have the attention the um the attachment of building a relationship with a, your grandmother as well. Yeah. And Seems like you do that a lot. I don't know if you realize about you. What? You've got like multiple lanes of sentiment sentimental things. Yeah. Like in one event. Yeah, I I could see it. And then I remember for that senior seminar, you know, I was like, you know what? I got to I got to do something else cuz uh, it wasn't again back to Edward Hopper like that's the way I I like photograph like my grandma from like a voyeuristic like standpoint. There's one I remember vividly of um her in the doorway looking out again from behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's one of my favorite photos. And that 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 photo actually is hanging up in one of my friend's apartments. It's really? so cool. Yeah. So then I remember f- for that exhibit, I was like, you know what? I really want the viewer t- to actually feel as if they're there with like my grandma. And then that's when I brought in like her actual couch into the yeah, studio. I remember that. And I allowed people to sit on there. I'm like, this is where I'll sit with, with like my grandma every week. That's super cool. Super, um, you know, changes it from it. Just a gallery to an installation, mm-hmm. you know, that's mm-hmm. awesome. But what was your life like during the pandemic? How did you fare? Was shit wild for you? Was uh, was it somewhat tame? It was very boring. So boring. Then, so then I had to make something out of it. So then that's when I created so much. I taught myself a lot of stuff on Photoshop and on Adobe Illustrator. I just watched tutorials and things that I've always wanted to do. And then I yeah. added that into like my tool set. Um, I like video call a lot with like my friends. And you're just chatting with them, a lot, a lot of artists, and we're like, "Hey, look, what you make this week? Yeah, <laughs> hey, what do you make this week? Yeah, and we're just talking. We try to challenge ourselves just to stay um, productive. Um, I'm not much of a movie person or like a TV person, but I remember that time frame. I was so bored. I'm, mean, you know what? I guess I'll watch a movie or something. There was kind of no time, like yeah. the present for that. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, it. You know what? I don't know if you feel this way, but it sort of feels surreal that it ever happened. Life feels pretty normal now. Yeah, I feel like it was just like a, just yeah. a snap of a finger. Oh, yeah, that happened. I remember being really frustrated in school, though, like all the school shit. Remember, like, this is how this goes, senior year. Yeah. Like, I'm, I felt a little bitter about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. I felt like we got, like, the loose end of, like, the stick, you know? Like, I've seen previous senior seminars and, like, how, like, hard, like, they got to go. But, like, yeah, we, uh, but we, we, we were so, like, li- like limited and um we we didn't have like that studio space as much as like other people like yeah. previous like, um, exhibitions did so then that's why i tried to make my studio space outside of uh, for my senior seminar so that's why i tried to make it work yeah i got lucky and had a garage at the time so nice. i was making stuff but um i'll have to thank you by the way because you took all the photos that i use on my website of uh oh yeah that show i stole them from the ssu flipper <laughs> nice so thank yeah, you for that of course i remember yeah i remember i was in charge of that yeah um, Kathy was like, Ozzy, please. 
mm-hmm. photograph. I'm like, yeah, I'll do my best. I'll try to get the best of everyone's artwork. Yeah, but thank you for that. Of it course, was awesome. Man. Yeah, it was a. Uh, um, I was frantic um, when I was making my website. I'm like, fuck, I have nothing. <laughs> so I was so relieved to find those. It was super dope. Mm-hmm. So, um, in your experience traveling around, what's some of the um, what's something you've learned or had an epiphany about? in the last year or so as you've been traveling much more? Traveling much more, you know, I'm only getting older with, with like, time. There's many things I want to do, and if I can't, like, just do it. Do you feel old? Yes. Hmm. I don't want to say this to you because it might ruin it for you, but um, have you had the, the uh, phenomena in your head yet where when you're younger, you're living, like, away from your birth? But then at some point in my mid twenties, I had the flip where now I'm like living towards my death. Yeah, you had you've yeah, felt that I've kind of thing. Yeah, I've thought about that already. You know, you know, like I'm 25 now. I'm like in 25 years from now, I'm gonna be 50. Mm-hmm. What well, what would I have accomplished since to uh, to that point? And if I don't do anything, then I'm going going gonna go crazy. I'm gonna drive myself insane, and then I'm closer to death, and I wasted my time. Yeah, like my life. So that's why I'm trying to do as much as I can now. Enjoy my youth. Enjoy the people around me. If I want to go travel somewhere, if I could, I'll make the time for it. Save up, you know. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing. Um, I mentioned I flew out to uh, New York two times already this year, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my best friends mo- uh, moved out there, so I get to visit her now anytime, whenever I go. So it's great to have a spot in New York. Yeah. Set up. Mm-hmm. So that's dope. Um, what do you think some... What do you think a misconception about you or your work is? Let's see. I feel like people think I'm pretty, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Like, I have so much work that people have, like, never seen. I think that's, I think that's one bad thing about me. Like, um, I'm like, please believe me. Like, I'm an artist. I just don't. I just don't have anything on me. Or like, I don't have anything to show you. Or like, um, but um, I'm constantly creating. I just don't show people. So like, I think that's that's the misconception. Um, oh, like he's not an artist. He doesn't do anything. Like, but I do. Yeah. Do you wish to show more work? Yeah, I think that's just because I'm just shy, or um, I don't know how people would react to it. Mm. Um, so like. If I'm going to put something out there, like, it needs to be, like, one of my best stuff ever. And then, you know, like, we're our, like, own worst credit. Credit yeah. with that stuff. And it's so yeah. hard. I've had to abandon that. I've had to abandon Lucky. any sort of... Well, I mean, I still have it. It's still, like, mm. one-third of the creative process is, like, are you sure you want to show people this? Mm-hmm. But I've I've managed to be, like, shut the fuck up. I'm putting this shit out, you know? Yeah. Have you thought about um, making a book? Yes. I feel like you would... Because you're, you're already... A writer. I wanted to make zines at one point. You should make zines, hundred percent. Like I have so I have thousands of photographs that people have never seen. Some that people have seen. I, I think it would be awesome to just put it all together in the book or in like little series. Of zines. Yeah, do a series. Do a volume one. Yeah, for sure. I um, remember I was actually going to do that in in the um, pandemic. Uh, one of my one of my boys, his name's John. Mm-hmm. He he tends to shoot film as much as I do. And um, and we had a name. I made a logo, but then with like the pandemic and the whole time apart, it just, yeah, it just made it hard to like ever put it together, and we never did it. I think um, in an effort, in an effort to um, like solid- the way that you're saying you're 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 very intentionally living. Mm-hmm. A cool, it would be really cool to have an artifact of your time in a mm. in like a yearly format or a quarterly format, especially as you're touring and taking more photographs, oh, yeah. you know, and you're already writing, you know, you write a blurb about where you're at and what you're doing in a photo or a, a poem, like another way to challenge yourself while another cyclical way mm-hmm. to like be always working, you know. I like that a lot. I'm always looking for stuff like that because I get mm-hmm. jealous of, I get jealous of creative avenues that people get to do more often, like musicians, comedians, they're, they're always working, you mm-hmm. know, especially comedians. Comedians could work like five days a week if they yeah. want. Musicians, you know, they can always just pick up their instrument and be pla- practicing or you can be singing or mm-hmm. you can be rehearsing with the band. Visual artists and writers and um, you have to force sculptors, your way out to that, man. you, have you to need, yeah, you have to be very intentional. Those mm-hmm. other sort of mediums kind of 
are much easier. Yeah. I used to play music much more, and I miss it. I need to get back to it, honestly. Do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, I think I'm going to... I put out an album in 2016 okay. and with a band I was in. Sick. And I've been sitting on songs for many years. Mm. So my the way I'm kicking myself now is like, in the next year, I got to put out an album. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what we're working on, you know. Um, I mentioned... So, like, um, our band, like, I'm new in, like, the band. Mm-hmm. So, like, that just happened. Mm-hmm. Like, I can get more into it. But, like, our goal for this year or, like, even leading into next year is to have, like, a full-length album. Has Okay, yeah. So, um, has this band put out a full-length before? Um, they put on, no. No. So, like, this is going to be, like, a first time, a fresh, brand new, with, like, me, whole new style, like, whole new look. It's, this is a whole new band. Like, sure. Like and what do you mean you're um, you're new to the band? So basically, this band has been around for about like two years now, two and a half. So like, I so like this band when it started off, everyone like in like the band like i like I'm cool with like these have been like my boys like I've been knowing them I've been going to like the shows since they first started and, mm-hmm. uh, and like my best friend is in the band so of course I'll I'll, I'll go see him anytime I could. Mm-hmm. And I remember it was like last year, about a year ago now, and then like the summer, I was at work and my best friend Louis he calls me. He's like, hey, Ozzy, are you going to the show on Saturday? And, like, they're, they were playing a show on Saturday. And, like, they were, like, opening it up for, like, this pretty cool, like, um, band. They're called Rob Brigade. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, of course. Like, like I'm going to be there. He's like, all right, cool. Like, like could, could could you do me a favor? I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, could you, like, do three songs for us? I'm like, what? Um, he's like, long story short, we kicked out the old vocalists. Um, I remember you you had mentioned, like, you'd be down to, to like, sing for us and stuff. I'm like... I was just joking. I, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. Interesting. He's like, come on, bro. He's like, you know the songs. I'm like, no, I don't. I just know, like, the main chorus parts. Like, I don't know anything. I don't I don't know the first thing about being on, like, the mic. He's like, no, oh, come on. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Send me, the, send me the three songs. So the show's on Saturday, and it's Thursday. So I had, like, one day to myself to practice. So on, like, that Friday, I was I was going insane. I was I was pulling, like like, my hair out, like, Oh, I don't want to let them down. I'm going to sound like shit. Like, oh, my God. But I listened to the three songs over and over again. I practiced them in, like, my room quietly, which which is really <laughs> hard. <laughs> you're trying to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, I can picture it. You're trying to scream like... Yeah, and yeah. then um, Saturday, um, the band had, like, asked if we could play first, just open it up, just get it out the way mm-hmm. uh, change 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 the plan like we had we had like no vocalist so i was filling in three three songs our boy john he was filling in three songs and then uh, the guitarist his name's chris he was going to fill in for like the other ones okay so so it got broken up in, into like three people and so like so like day of it's saturday now we practiced one hour before we we hit the platform and that was your first rehearsal with the band yes I remember we uh, linked up at the practice spot and we ran through the whole set once. And I'm like, well, that's it? One one run? Just one run. I was shitting bricks. I was like, oh, man. Hey, man, but you fucking did it. Yeah. Hell and, yeah. And then we got there. It was so many people because it was, it was like a big like show. I was like, oh, Where man. was it? It was at uh, Chi-Town a, a, a Football. So back in the day, they like used to have shows there. So it, so it's um here in Pilsen. Mm-hmm. It's like an indoor soccer um a facility. And in the back, they like used to open it up to have shows there. So, mm. so it was super cool. Like they would like be... People playing like soccer matches and stuff, and in the back, like there'll be shows. Yeah, it was two completely di- different worlds in like one place. It was like the sports people playing soccer, and then there's, there's all these punks and the hardcore yeah. kids just having shows in the back. Hey, well, it's got to be dual purpose for the community, right? Yeah, it was awesome, awesome space. I I really miss it. So, can you try to describe the sensation the moment before? Yeah. So okay, you're on stage now. Yeah. So and then I remember pulling up. I had my AirPods in, and people have told me this. Like, hey, Ozzy, I remember for, for that show, I saw you with like your AirPods, just pa- pacing back and forth. I'm like, yeah, I was nervous. I remember I got the mic, and everyone just gave me the look. I was like, all right, let's do it. Fuck yeah. And then we started. I forgot the the fucking words. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> I started freestyling, just saying anything that came to my head, and it worked. And looking back at the videos, and the band was like, so after I set. People popped off. At some point, people knew, like, the song was like, take the mic. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. But it worked out. Like, our band is for the people. Like, yeah. the, um, something I like to say, like, like this is your space. These are your these are your songs. Let's have fun. 
That's awesome. And um, so after our set, the band was like, hmm, hey, Ozzy, we have a show in Wisconsin next week. Are you down to do it? But you have to know all the songs. I'm like, well, at least I get, at least I get a week. I'm like, all right. I could do a week. I could do a week. Nice. So in like the week, I learned like their whole um, disco- discography. And then we played that show in Wisconsin. It was at this on DIY spot called JJ's Bar and Grill. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I remember getting on the mic. I'm like, keep in mind, this is my second show. Thank you for being here. You know, and we rocked out and people were like, nice. Hey, Ozzy. In like two weeks, we have a show in Springfield, Illinois. Are you down to do that? I was like, all right, sure. We played at this place called uh, Dumb Records in Springfield, Illinois. And same thing popped off. And, and from there and then, I was just filling in, filling in for like, for like the band. And so they wanted to make it official, but they actually opened up tryouts for like anyone who was interested in, you know, just, just to make it fair to be in the band. Sure. And they just vied with me a bit more, I guess, just because I had been filling in shows for for them. I know everyone in the band. Nice. I've been practicing and working on my technique, and yeah, we. And now I'm in the band. And so, how long have you been playing now with them? It's gonna, it's, it's gonna reach like that one year mark. Okay, so pretty pretty recently. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna reach like that one year mark uh, when when I started to fill in for for shows for them. Awesome. And who you guys is the set changed much in a year now? Um, yeah, like, um, we actually have, like, four songs, like, like, original songs with, like, me now, so, like, meaning we, we've been able to scratch out four of the, the mm-hmm. old vocalist songs, and now, I mean, our goal is to have, like, the, like, the full, like, length album. Right. And then for that, you know, probably have all new songs and maybe, like, two or three of the old ones. What is your band's songwriting process like? Like, does it, so, does, yeah, does um, the guitarist come up with a riff? Yeah, so basically, um... Our our lead um, guitar, his name's Chris. Mm-hmm. Him and our drummer Rick, they like tend to go in on a practice session, but just them two alone. Mm-hmm. Like they'll go in, have like a two three hour session, just jam out and and record. Then they'll then they'll present it to us, and then we all listen to it. And then um, second, um, a, a guitar comes in and bass, and they and they tend to like add in like their parts and they brainstorm. And then they have a session. Like, like within all them. I mean, sometimes I do sit in like the sessions and I'll say like random random stuff, but I don't want to interrupt them. I'll I'll let them have their like, have yeah. their uh, brainstorming session. But once they have like a structure, like a whole song, like well, we need lyrics, Ozzy. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll do my part. Nice. And then I'll take that home and I'll listen to it. I will write things down. I write the whole lyrics. I come into the, into the next practice session. And like, all right, like let's practice it. Like. 12 times and we'll go over and over and I'll say my part is we'll change stuff and yeah that's awesome are you do you find yourself wanting to or perhaps you've started writing your own guitar and singing like singer songwriter I feel like um being in, in like a room full of like professionals or like people who are like super good at, at, at like what they're doing like oh that's your that's your just your head telling you that yeah I'm mm. like man I can't do that like mm. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to them but like I'll do my part but like um Ever since joining like the band, I'm like, you know what? I want to show them that I can contribute more than like than I like, just like my voice. And since I'm an artist, I do a lot of graphical stuff. So mm-hmm. then I'm, I've been like I've designed like poster stuff for them and flyer things, and you know, um, I'm making t-shirt stuff like um um designs. So nice. that and um, photo like photographing. You know, I want to show them that I have like more to bring to the table opposed to just my voice. Just yeah, like, you're um I, yeah. You're a useful artist yeah. and um, reinforcements for the cause. Yeah. You know? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Ozzy, what should young people know? What should young people know? Don't be afraid. So, like, um, one, so like one thing about being, like, a front man, I am a very shy person, but, like, I don't know. I don't want to get into too many, like, speeches and stuff, so I try to, to like, just get straight to the point. Um so like I'm from a very small neighborhood in the south side of um Chicago, and that's all I saw or knew like growing up. So then playing to be able to play these shows outside of my like my hometown to be able to travel and play for shows, I'm like in front of people I've never seen before, probably will never see again in like my life, and I thank them all for like simply being here. I'm like thank you for like your time, and, like your and, like your space and like your en- and, like your energy. Like, this is for everyone. If this is one of your first shows, like, welcome to, like, the family. And I hope you keep on coming more and supporting, like, the scene, supporting, like, the cause. So, like, um, don't be afraid. I mean, um, we all started somewhere because um, 
like one like one negative thing I've noticed about like the scene, like um people are like, Oh, like it's not like gate like gate kept a lot, you know, like like people want it to be so like closed or like just like f- on like only for us. But like mm. with like TikTok and social media and stuff, you know, like like the genre has been expanding. There's being exposed to a lot more people. So well, me personally, I don't mind, you know, we all started somewhere and like going to shows. I'm like I'm, I'm like keep on coming. Like it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, right? Mm-hmm. New faces into yeah. your music, into the same similar minds, like we yeah. said earlier. Yeah, even if you look funny or goofy dancing around, you especially know, if you look funny or goofy, <laughs> we we all started somewhere, so it's okay. Yeah, so keep on coming. That's awesome. I had a quote, um, another Nietzsche's quote about dancing, but you kind of just answered it with that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, Ozzy, where can people find you, you on the internet? Where can they follow you in your work? Uh, me um, on Instagram, I go by Ozworks. Um, our like band name is called C Dios Quiere. Also on like Instagram is C Dios Quiere H H C. Mm-hmm. Uh, our music it's all over like Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, Bandcamp, everything, every like um, music platform. But mostly I stay on like, on like Instagram. So if anyone ever wants to chit chat, like uh, create, just hit us up. Hell yeah, cool. Is there anything else that people should know? Let's see. Honestly. Give this guy a listen. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you for so like much. your time and like, and like your space. Um, so comfortable, and I've been having a really good time. Cool, man. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming to do this. Um, mm-hmm. I want to do much, many more of these. So yeah, we'll have to have you back in the studio oh, after you do your tour and you go and doing some fun things. Yeah, come tell us again about it. But um, truly, thank you for coming and doing this. Appreciate it so no, much. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you, Ozzy. Awesome. Thanks, man. Don't move just yet. Don't move. I'm going to take a picture of us. <laughs> For sure. That wasn't so bad. That was more than an hour. Oh,